have three routers, and um, the three guys said the same thing uh, ten, bi 10 minutes before the start. They, they said it's a good way to be a pleasure to go to the south, but the north, they said you will have uh, some difficulties uh, to go to the north. So we believe that we have uh, enough experience and uh, we have enough strong to go to the north face. But it was not a, a pleasure party at the beginning. It was very, very, very hard for us. Very, very, very hard for us. Fascinating race. We saw Kokodi take the northerly route, the only boat to take the northerly route from the start. We'd ruled that out. Uh, it looked too much for us. The first front uh, was uh, very hard because uh, the wave was six meters uh, high, plus the wave of the wind, one of the left, one of the right. The wave was not difficult the day but the night, it was impossible. We try to find uh, like we can, and it was very, very difficult for the boat. Sometimes we, we believe that uh, the boat should uh, break. So uh, we reduce uh, the speed of the boat to take care, take care about the sails, or, or, or the boat, or the crew after. <laughs> but uh, the second week, we have the, the moon. For the driver, it was better. Yeah, no, I think Dawn Treader is a competitive team. I think we had Kokodi, which definitely made us push. Um, Kokodi went north, we went south, so there was that element of who's got the better routing. We plugged south and we were lucky enough to keep in the breeze, but we unfortunately hit something, I'm not sure what it was, in the water around the Cape Verdes. We heard a bang, it hit the rudder. Didn't think it was that consequential at the time, but it was quite a big bang. And over the course of the next few days, we found that when we were going fast, then we got some rudder oscillation, which was manageable to start with. Uh, we put a lot of rudder tow on, but then as we were kept on going faster, it started to happen at lower speeds. We had a lot of, a lot of squalls uh, and we were six up. So we, there was more and more, uh, more and more drain on the crew. And then it, it, as we pushed on through that period, we, were, we could see Kakodi and they were struggling with their transition zone coming south. Uh, but then the oscillation became pretty scary, to be honest, so we, we, we throttled back. It was much harder than I thought it was going to be. It was obviously very different. I hadn't done anything like it before. The longest race I'd done before this was four days or whatever. Um, so 17 was a bit more, but it was good. Wow, that is nuts. That is crazy. I obviously saw a lot of Dad, which was really nice. Also, I think it's a fun thing to do is like with me and him, and but I've enjoyed it far more because he's there and it means we've done it together and it's a lot of fun. I mean, I love the Rock Transas, I love offshore. I think it's a different aspect of sailing to inshore. You've got so many different things to overcome. I think the first time I did it two years ago, I was on Juno, which was my father's J122. Whereas this time I was definitely pushed out of my comfort zone a bit more, being with a different crew, not having that sort of family aspect, albeit the whole crew were incredibly supportive of one another. Abel is hugely supportive. He for one, it allows females to sail on his boat offshore and inshore. Ensures that everyone has a chance helming, which you don't always get. So we pushed ourselves, but there was definitely a good vibe on board. That's the whole part of it. You're supposed to push yourself, go out of your comfort zone and try and win the race. Kakodi sailed very well. They managed their crew very well. They managed their boat very well. And, and they were able to keep sustain the speed and and got away from us at the end. But it was, it was a great race, loved it. It, it was definitely a journey. Um, but pleased to get everyone back safely and, uh, and no big dramas. So yeah, I'm very pleased with the experience.